can you go over how to code for a, a TAVR procedure or the watchman as it's sometimes called? This was a lot of fun to do research on because um, I had been familiar with this procedure, but things have changed since I've done this. And um, so I really narrowed down on Watchman, actually, uh, because it is, it's actually not a TAVR. Uh, they're a little bit different. So for the first, for the uh, most part, if you are going to have a patient that has uh, uh, aortic stenosis and severe aortic stenosis where they need to do something. Um, they've got a low surgical risk for open heart surgery and they do a transcatheter aortic valve replacement. That's what a TAVR is and sometimes they call it a TAVI which is a less invasive procedure. Um, uh, what they do is they go in and do, uh, there's three approaches here that I found. One, they'll go up through the femoral artery, you can see here, and then they do their procedure um, uh, in the valve right there. This one is a trans uh, apical, or you know, they go up under the arm, or actually it goes in the chest, but the uh, that's one approach. And then the other one is the transaortic where they go in there in the front of the chest. Okay. So these are TAVRs, trans um, aortic valve replacement is the procedure. So you can imagine that there's going to be a lot of different things that can be done uh, and reasons why a patient would have this done. There's more than one reason to have a stenosis in a valve. Now, the Watchman device is a little bit different though. It's um, not a valve replacement. Uh, ultimately, people that have arterial fib or AFib, and um, if the condition that they have is this extra little uh, appendage off the heart, it's called a left anterior, um, excuse, excuse me, I'm saying that wrong, a left arterial appendage, then they've got to um, block that off because if they don't, that can pool blood and then you can form a clot. Um, so again, you have to have two things for this watchman. You have to have AFib and you have to have an LAA, which is that left arterial appendage. Now, let me show you what they do for it. They go in and they do um, this watchman LAAC procedure, and I've got a picture of it here, um, And but not all, per, uh, not all payers pay for this. The code that you're going to use uh, if you're doing PCS, because for the most part, this is probably an inpatient um, procedure that's done, is going to be O2L73DK. What do we have going on? We have an occlusion of a left arterial appendage. So again, you have to have that little pocket up there by the um, uh, atrium on the left side with intra uh, intraluminal device percutaneous approach. Now, um, it's not just about the PCS code though. You have to make sure that you have medical decision making, right? MDM, uh, you have to have, uh, it has to be a necessity. Uh, and again, Medicare doesn't pay for this particular device. So CMS billing instructions, what do they tell you to do? First of all, for a hospital claim, um, they have the following things, the NCD for percutaneous LAAC procedure, that's what we're doing, uh, the watchman. Uh, at, this was all done at 2016. Um, the, the fact is, is this watchman device, which I'm going to show you a picture of here in just a minute, is um, was relatively a new device and uh, it had to go through trials and stuff like that. But they are not going to pay for it and then if you, unless you have the proper um, ICD codes to back it up. And they're saying one of the following, you've got to either have proximal AFib, persistent AFib, chronic AFib, or unspecified AFib, and then there's your codes. Now notice there's probably more characters that you have to do. And then a secondary diagnosis code of Z00.6. 
um, uh, would be applicable. Also, it is only for inpatient. Medicare will not pay for this outpatient at all. Um, doesn't mean that you can't do it, but Medicare is not going to pay for it. Payer specific otherwise is what you need to know. This is what this watchman looks like. Now, if you're going to do um, outpatient PCS or not PCS, it's going to be 33340, which is the uh, transcatheter closure percutaneous of the left ater um, arterial uh, atrial appendage. And uh, this is what this looks like. So see this little pocket? Not everybody has this. You know, this is an unusual thing. This is about the size of a quarter, and they go in and place that and then give it a little tug because it's got little barbs on it. And then it's got this filter so that if blood gets pushed through there, clots can't come back and produce clots. So this is where you're going to see that appendage sticking out, right? And this is where that this is not a normal thing to have, and um, that's where they're going to put the watchman device. This is the catheter that goes up and places it. So they stick it in there, and then they pull it back uh, to make sure it grabs with the little barbs. Uh, this is let's see the uh, uh, site of the clot that can occur. See how they've got that appendage and how a clot develops right there. Anyway, thought that was pretty fascinating. So, things you need to know about coding. If you're going to use CPT, outpatient, Medicare is not going to pay for it. It's going to be 33340 is your code. If you're going to do um, uh, inpatient, Medicare will pay, but you got to make sure that you have AFib uh, or they're not going to do it. And just because the person has this appendage, I wasn't able to find if that automatically means that you have AFib. Um, but for PCS, you're going to be looking at O2L73DK as your PCS code. It's all about the root operation, and um, this is going to be um, an occlusion. That's what we're actually doing. We're occluding off that little pocket. There you go. So I really kind of went with the watchman because the other uh, procedures have been around for a while. The watchman is pretty new. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.